Hi. As you can see, this cart is stationary. Pretty clear why it is, of course. It's experiencing two forces. The first of force, of course, is acting downwards, and that is Earth's gravity is pulling it downwards. The second force is the surface of the actual track here, which is applying a force in the upward direction. Those two are at the moment equal, but in opposite direction, and both are applied on the cart. That's, in essence, Newton's first law. Two forces that are equally applying on the object in opposite directions, giving a net force of zero and not accelerating. However, if I change the situation, like so, clearly gravity is still working. But the object no longer is able to stay in its stationary position. It accelerates. So why is that? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. I'm going to explain to you the physics of the incline plane. And I'm going to start off by also introducing the concept of the normal force. So here I have my block that is sitting on this plank. And of course, this block is stationary. And for all intents and purposes, we're going to ignore friction in this case. Now, of course, we're interested in the forces acting on the block. And the first force is, of course, the force of gravity on the block, which is pulling the block downwards. Now, if you were to examine this from Newton's third law, of course, then there is also a force of the block acting onto the Earth in the opposite direction. But that's Newton's third law, and we're not interested in forces on other objects. We're only interested in the force acting on the block. So the other force acting on the block, of course, is the surface pushing back up on the block. And so now we have two forces acting the block. Of course, these two forces are equal in magnitude, but in opposite direction. And that means, of course, that we have Newton's first law at play. Therefore, the object is stationary. It's not accelerating. That's the definition of Newton's first law. Now, the important thing is, is to understand that this force here that is acting on the block from the surface is often referred to as the normal force. And we're going to use usually the symbol F with a subscript capital N to represent that normal force. And what is really important to understand is if I take that normal force and just place it onto the surface, I want you to appreciate the fact that that force is always at right angles to the surface. But what if I were to raise this surface upwards? What happens then? So here I have my same block and we have it on an incline. And as I told you, we're going to ignore friction at this case and we're interested in why it slides down the ramp. Now, the first thing, of course, is we need to show the force that we have. And in this case, we have the force of gravity of pulling the block down. Now, what that does is it does two things. First of all, if we break that up into components, we have a force pushing into the surface at right angles here. The second thing we have, of course, is that we have a component that is acting down the plane. So these two green, green vectors are actually components of the force of gravity acting on the block. If the block is pushing on the plank in this direction, then there is going to be a force of the plank onto the block in the opposite direction. And we have this force here, which is again our normal force. This is Fn. But it is no longer equal to the force that is acting here. This is a little smaller. And in fact, it gets a little it gets smaller, the greater the angle that we have here. Now, why is that? Well, let's explore that. If this is theta right here, then we can see that the angle here or the angle here, whether we look at from this perspective or this perspective, it's the same angle. That's 90 minus theta. That means that this angle right here is equal to theta. Now, if we use trigonomic ratios, we can appreciate the fact that this component now is equal to F cosine theta. Now, that F, of course, is equal to the normal force. That's the force here of the block acting on the plane. And the plane, of course, is pushing back up onto the block in the opposite direction. So that is also equal to F cosine theta. Now, what is F? Now, F, of course, is the weight of the object, so it becomes mg cosine theta. And I hope you can appreciate the fact that this value is less than the weight of the block because cosine angle is always less than one. 
Similarly speaking, we have, of course, a force down the plane, a component down the plane, and that's going to be equal mg sine theta down the plane. Now, if we just ignore our green vectors and just remove those for the moment, like so, you see now we have two forces acting on the block. And these two forces, of course, I can add up. So if I move this vector here and add it to this vector here, you can see now I have a net value. And that net value, of course, is that vector that we had before. That value there happens to be the net of these two forces acting. And that means I have a net force, and that means my net force is equal to mg sine theta. And that is, of course, why it accelerates. If I want to keep it there, then I have to apply that force in the opposite direction to cancel out that net force here to stop it from sliding, whether it is a force that you apply by exertion or whether it is a frictional force that holds it there. It is the same situation using the great uh, animations from the University of Colorado FET team. You can see here I have my normal force acting like on the block and I can raise this up like so. In this case, we have ice as our platform because we want a frictionless surface. And as you can see, as I increase the angle, that cosine component obviously gets smaller and smaller. And so my net force ends up being smaller and smaller. So this force here clearly is now not only in a different direction, but at a smaller value. If I really almost increase it to vertical, you can appreciate that the cosine will eventually become cosine 90, which is equal to zero. Therefore, there is no normal force acting. If, for example, we have it flat, then my cosine of the angle becomes cosine of zero, which is one. So that's maximum. And of course, that is equal to the weight. And of course, when we therefore at an angle, because we have a net force acting down the plane, we of course have the object accelerating at the value of g sine theta, and down it goes. I hope that has helped you understand a little bit of the normal force involved in inclined planes, and we're going to use that to understand friction in inclines and pulley systems with inclines. I'm Paul from High School V6 Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.